We're up here in a not very sunny uh, Queensland, and I've got Mark here. Thanks for coming. Oh, yeah, good to yeah. see you, Tony. Pleasure. Good, yeah, good spot here. Uh, and Mark's got a Frenny. So, what year model is this one? Uh, 1988 GS. The last uh, placement was 145 Signal Squadron in Banyo. Yeah, it's done a bit of construction, and there's a few other codes in there which I'm sure I'll post on the page somewhere. And if any of you, uh, any of yep. you army nuts want to help me decode it, I'd be <laughs> grateful to hear. I've had it for about, I think, October last year. Yeah. But um, it wasn't registered for about six weeks, just giving it a run over, so it's just about over six month free rego. So this is my second Parenti, and I've also had a, the, the 2A workshop. So there's a few little bits missing, Tony. Um, again, if there's anybody out there on other pages want to yeah. uh, <laughs> help me out with a few bits. So yeah, I want to keep it as absolute stock as possible. I think there's a couple of little bits. The, L the LEDs were put on by a previous owner, um, and it has got the... Um, Clutch booster and power steering, but yeah. they're just bolt on, so it can be flipped, yeah. flipped, flipped back to absolute stock. If, yeah, if and we'll lift the bonnet in a moment, we'll have a look sure. at those as well. Yeah, my dad's been in, was with Land Rovers for a long time, he, he used to restore them. Back over in England. Back in England. Yeah. Um, and I was also in the cadets, and we were always running around in the forest in, in, in such things. Um, and. I've always wanted to have Land Rovers. Yeah. This, this is my third one, as I've said, but um, this is my keeper now. And I think looking at some of the failure issues that we often see on, on, on Facebook pages and, and, and other forums, obviously the Gal chassis takes care of that. Yeah. The, the, the non Land Rover engine takes care of that. Yeah. So I think all of the, the major faults of non military Land Rovers are taken care of. Yeah. They are pretty a bulletproof setup, aren't they, with yeah. the Isuzu engine, right. with the gearbox that it's got as well. Yeah. To, to be honest, I think if I did look at something else, I would want a five-speed box. Yep. But I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm getting older. I'm 51. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I have no plans to get speeding tickets ever in this. So yeah. The four-speed box. It's clearly enough for, for, yeah. for, for what it does. And they're not the sort of vehicle you're going to be going up and down the expressways or highways no. all the time, are you? No. Yeah, so for most of the time it's really good. That's a good job, yeah. Um, and I think also with, with parts and availability, um, getting a bit yep. rarer. Um, yeah. The, the fact it is a giant Meccano set, I think, makes, it, makes a big difference. With yeah, the, with everything's the bolt on, bolt off. Um, and with the older vehicle, you've got plenty of room around things. You don't yeah. have all the electronics taking up or hoses everywhere. No. So there's plenty of room around to yeah. work as and well. Not even having window wipers. Uh, window yeah. winders is obviously a, a, yeah. a great bonus. Keep it simple. Yeah. The Parenti, uh, I think, again, you, you're going to have to check, check out the, uh, the facts on this. I think it was a, a model that started in 1987. Um, and it's based on the, um, the Land Rover 110. Um, the British British design and built, but they were basically assembled in, in Australia. Um, and again, all the, the military folks out there, I'm not trying to uh, overrule anything that, that you know. This is just my brief understanding of, of the model. Um, so it's got a galvanized chassis. Um, it's actually got an extended chassis, so the, the rear cross member is slightly different to house the, um, the spare wheel up underneath. A lot of people would stand and see a, a spare wheel up on the deck here. Um, you'll see we've got tool mounts, they're Pioneer Tools is often uh, referred to there, which is essentially a shovel, a pick and a, um, a, a, a wood axe. You've also got your, um, your mounts here for the windscreen to fold down. On a lot of the civilian vehicles you'll see these are just dumb, dumb spots, but in the, in the front it's actually got a hinge, so that can come down and you've got your fittings. Um, other extras on top of the, the Land Rover uh, standard model. You've got your blackout lights for um, low intensity driving. It gives a very limited beam um, and also a convoy light. Um, and you've got tack plates. Well, in fact, I don't think they're called tack plates. I think they're often referred to as tack plates, but um, they're for uh, identification purposes for uh, when you're on the track of which squadron or which uh, arm of the services that the, the vehicle's from. As I said earlier, this, the last uh, commitment for this vehicle was with 145 Signal Squadron. Um, but it was with an engineer squadron and somebody um, on, online, one of the forums has suggested that maybe it was an engineering uh, vehicle because it did have a third tack plate holder in the middle here. Um, 
In terms of range, this is what you call a, a, a general service or a cargo vehicle. There is another um, version, the, the FFR fitted to radio. It is also a six wheel drive version, which has got all sorts of different uh, uses. I, again, I'm not very clued up on the 6x6. Uh, there are a couple of, also the, uh, the RFSV, the Regional Forces uh, Surveillance Vehicle. Uh, again, not too, not too clued up on the, the parts or the difference of that. And it's got power steering, uh, which was something that just became a more of a service item. Again, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm no claim to have ever been anywhere near the army. This is just from my research and then talking with other people on the forum. So the power steering was a, a point a point of failure for the vehicle potentially in a in, in, in a combat situation so that was, was was not ever put on this vehicle as a standard um, and it makes driving it a whole lot easier um, I'm not getting any younger and the other thing that's different in this vehicle to uh, I guess the standard is it's got a, a, a clutch boost on it from a series 3 which helps my right foot remarkably as I said I'm I'm no spring chicken anymore but it makes the clutch incredibly light on this vehicle Inside, it's a very noisy, rattly vehicle. Um, it's, a, it's a classic, so the, the window felts need replacing. There's, there's still work to be done. Um, again, most of what's well, all of what's in here is stuck, apart from my uh, little friend here. So the fellow who owned, owned the vehicle before me may recognise this from, from him. A um, couple of replacement pieces that I'm on the on the march for. We've obviously got rifle racks are missing from the side here. I've got a couple of stretcher clamps missing, we'll have a look at the back ones. Cubby box is an extra. I believe this has come from a county, but again, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, we've got all the extra blackout lighting, map reading light. Um, but apart from that, it's a fairly, fairly stock uh, equivalent to a, what would be a 110 county uh, of, of the day. This one's done 165,000 on the clock, but um, we had a new clock at 130 so it's actually only done 100 130 odd thousand k's um a couple, got, of, yeah. couple of cracks in there but a bit of wear and tear yeah and just on the dash there there's a blackout so we, yeah as you can see it on the full screen now you've got your, your lights and when that comes up it just becomes a fairly small little pinhole light mark and i were just talking about the um the diff lock which is the center diff lock and if we say anything that's wrong and you know different, just put yeah, it in the comments. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's a four speed um, with reverse on the opposite side to, oh sorry, no, that reverse is where it should be. On the series, the reverse was up next to first. Down here, you've just got your low and high and your transfer. So permanent four wheel drive in these ones. Um, yeah, so back's how you leave it for driving. Tony and I were just discussing the fact then in a neutral position if you're running something off your PTO or something like that then you've got a neutral position and then you've got your low there and then if you really get stuck we've got this magic button here which we're going to pull out it's a, a vacuum uh, powered central diff lock and next to that you've got your blackout so you've got normal lighting um, reduced and then blackout as well and that's the dimmer i think is just for the dash and something else that's a good feature with uh a lot of the older land rovers uh, a few other vehicles had them too but not quite the same is the free air conditioning oh yeah absolutely very expensive air conditioning system but as you can see from the back we also have wonderful air conditioning through running around with no no sides on so these are really good if you're at the front of the convoy uh, not so good if you're at the back. And one thing that you are after is because this is a GS and they've got their stretcher um, mounts. You can see on the back there you've got the two stretcher mounts, and there should be a pair yeah, here. Yeah, we've, we've got a pair missing here. I've I've got the the gun rack all ready to go. I'll replace the the gun rack in here, but it, I, I, I would like that. So if there are any any viewers out there that have got a set going in their shed that they don't want an arm and a leg for, so the the rear is. Um, fairly standard up here the cross member that comes through is has been extended on the on the uh, on this vehicle to make room for the spare and you'll see we've got these extra um, sticky out parts I suppose they I think they're the helicopter lift points um, there's some great shots on the on the internet if you look around of, of these these things hanging in the air below a, a heavy lift helicopter with chains and so on we've also got 
uh, extra for the, the um, fuel. I use it for water. Uh, my understanding is that you're not supposed to carry explosive uh, liquids on the outside of your vehicle. Again, happy to stand corrected, so I just use mine for my water carrying. I've um, got the standard pintle hook and uh, NATO 12 pin 12 volt plug. Um, probably the only difference uh, in this vehicle standard came out of the army was the fact that the the Land, the Land Rover badge has been moved down. Um, previous owner had a, a really nice little um, novelty plate, I suppose, but I'm, as I said earlier, I want to try and keep this stock, so a little bit of fill on that, and that'll all get sprayed up and move my badge back. Again, the, the, the paired up uh, identification plates, and we've got some other convoy lights here. Um, you see the galvanising on the chassis, They're coming through nicely. Um, and I think the other big the other big difference for me from an aesthetic being uh, bought up on Land Rovers with my dad um, is the fact that you've got these shapes here which are the cutouts for the original kind of 73 or 90 mil um, lights but they've gone with these the Heller um, blocks underneath the sort of the single block sort of lights rather than the individual uh, smaller round lights. Um, and again, that's obviously making room for your, for your carriers or your canisters um, so that they didn't interfere with your lights. And um, these are the, the stretcher clamps. One has, has the cargo, it's got the um, paired seats. Got the paired seats. Um, I've not done anything since, since owning it from the previous owner. I've secured the tray up a little bit. Waiting for waiting on paint from Protect to be honest. Bit of a difference with the GS to the FFR. The GS has the tailgate, whereas the FFR doesn't have that step through. Yeah. And inside it's quite different as well. Um, and I'll try and get an FFR one day and I'll compare the two. But one thing I noticed is that uh, we've got these tie downs here. These um, mm -hmm. they've sort of countersunk tie downs there, which the FFR that I had didn't have those. Um, also, you're getting the full length seats there um, and then these here we've got uh, a rear they yeah. call it a ROPS which is a rollover protection system oh, yeah, you've got the, the rear and then the, the, the front one which again I don't want to test it no. having the having the, the 45 angle I think gives that a lot, lot, lot more strength and I, 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 I don't know that this is going to save a whole load of lives but um, again for licensing and registration purposes I'm not allowed anybody in the back. I think there are members on certain forums that have put through seat belts and got engineering. Yeah, if you get them engineered and put the seat yeah. belt in, you can um, have it there. But, uh, yeah, I've got no intention of doing that. I'm just going to keep it keep it as is. Yeah. And do you mainly drive around with all the sides no, up? I don't. Yeah, this this is how it is. That's why I'm, I'm a bit soft. If it, if it does yeah. rain, I'm like, no, no, I'll leave her home. So Mark and I were just talking about buying them privately or from the auctions because um, a lot of people used to buy them from the auctions but they're starting to die off a little bit now yeah. and there's a lot on the used market um, and I know when I first was looking I went and had a look at a few of the auctions uh, and some of them presented really well others even though they came with a blue slip which means roadworthy you still had rust in the firewall or under the door mm. so uh, even though it's aluminium and galvanized chassis they still can rust there still yeah. can be issues with them and they will pass them through Whereas uh, if you go and buy a private, you can then take it for a test run, take yeah. it off road and make sure that everything's working properly, that it's not grinding in the gears, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the leaks a bit more. If there's any uh, exhaust fumes, because you, you can actually start up, drive it. Whereas if you buy in the auctions, you've just got to go off the um, report, mm -hmm. what's in the book. I think you can access the book, yeah. uh, log book, um, and just how you look at it. Mm -hmm. So unless someone who was in the army knows that vehicle, what it was like recently, it is a bit of a risk. Yeah. Um, so, you, did you buy yours in the auction or privately? So my, my, my first one I bought from the auction, and, and, and all, all jokes aside for the forum members, I literally paid $7,000 for my first one. Well, this could be fun. Uh, 